Hi, in this quick video we will discuss one of the recent articles that was published in the American Journal of Perinatology by Dr. Srinivasan and uh, Rawat. It's a viewpoint on less invasive surfactant administration and I'll just discuss this table which clearly illustrates the three main methods apart from Insure. So all of you are familiar with the Insure which is intubate, surfactant and extubate and obviously uh, it's similar to the normal intubation technique except that we uh, plan to extubate the baby at the earliest. So the advantages of the insure technique is obviously that we know the tube is in position by conforming with the ATCO2 sensor. We know that the dose being administered can be given as per the usual technique with a feeding tube into the endotracheal tube and uh, the baby can be backed up briefly. As soon as we know that the baby is tolerating, the vital signs are okay, uh, we can extubate the baby immediately and put back on CPAP. The disadvantage of the insure technique is that sometimes we may hesitate to extubate the baby. This can be a disadvantage as well as an advantage uh, depending on the condition of the lung. The other disadvantage is uh, that I mean we don't give CPAP during this period and the baby is exposed to mechanical ventilation or IPPV breaths during this period. The Neopuff is usually used to avoid the bag so that we are in control of the pressure that we are giving and there is a peep given as well. So the alternative methods include the laryngeal mask. Obviously as we discussed in the other video earlier, laryngeal mask airway can be used for babies above 1.5 kilo even though the license is about 2 kilos. The size 0 should be available soon hopefully and we can use it for the smaller babies that, but that is the biggest disadvantage we have at the moment. So the advantage is it avoids complications due to direct laryngoscope. It's very easy to insert the laryngeal mask airway. We need to have the uh, device in the NICU which most of us do have in the crash carts or separately. The NRP includes it so all of us are familiar with the LMA as well. And we can also give uh, IPPV through the LMA if the baby has desaturation or bradycardia as part of the surfactant installation. The disadvantage obviously like the insurer we can't give CPAP during the procedure and we do need PPV to disperse the surfactant so the lung is exposed to the PPV even though not to the same extent as the insurer. And the size uh, restriction that we mentioned we cannot use in the extreme premature babies. There is no lack of evidence, there is no clear evidence at the moment that it works to reduce BPD even though there are studies which have used it in select cases. The thin catheter method or the angio cath or the lisa cath, uh, surf cath, any of these can be used and uh, it's uh, useful in the extremely premature babies as well. If you use a McGill forceps you can use a thin catheter. If the angio cath it's uh, fairly firm and it can be used like intubation. The SurfCath uh, recent studies have shown that you can connect the size 3 ET tube adapter and the calorimetry, the CO2 sensor can change color with this even though the flow is not too much because these are active babies we are intubating. And uh, it reduces the need for intubation and ventilation and some evidence for reduction in BPD mortality. Obviously, uh, we need direct laryngoscopy with associated risks and it probably needs a little more skill to be confident that it is in the airway other than the insure technique. We need the use of McGill forceps and training with advanced skills. We may need pre-medication. Most people avoid the sedation or opioid or uh, muscle relaxant with this obviously, but we can use atropine to reduce the risk of bradycardia. There is lack of evidence regarding long-term neurodevelopmental outcome, but there is no reason to be worried that it will impact the long-term outcome. Aerosolization, however, is not a comparable method because it's truly non-invasive with the concurrent use of CPAP and it avoids laryngoscopy. There is a reduced need for intubation and no pre-medication. So these advantages are there, but the most important factor is that we don't know the optimal dose of surfactant and we don't know how much of it really goes into the lungs. Uh, we need an effective nebulizer to aerosolize the surfactant. Most of the studies have used a nebulizer which fits into a pacifier like setup through the mouth. However, even though the medicine can be reaching the lung, the clinical efficacy has not been shown in the studies. In the bigger babies, it may reduce the need, but it's not clear cut because these babies may be getting away without the surfactant anyway. And uh, there is no data on the effect. 
The authors have concluded in this particular article that you would want to do a study comparing these three methods and compare them with Insure. But in my view, I don't think you need to do all three methods together. A good large study comparing Insure with the LISA using a thin catheter method should be adequate. The laryngeal mask has its disadvantages. It doesn't go directly into the airway and uh, wastage may be an issue as well. Uh, it has a role in certain babies where intubation may be difficult and of course we will wait for more data on whether it can be used for all small babies but the majority of the babies who need uh, surfactant will not for fit for the will be will not be suitable for the LMA because of the size availability currently the thin catheter is well established and if you have the technical expertise it's better to go for it uh, aerosolization is still in the experimental stages we need to improve a lot before we can introduce it in practice. So uh, this is a short summary of this topic. Thank you.